has held up. Oh, and left. All right, here we go. Another edition of Knicks Fan TV's Court Vision. This is the show where we break down the X's and O's on the orange and blue with never before seen game footage and camera angles. CP of Knicks Fan TV here. Tommy D on the other side. Tommy, you know, this Knicks first half was sparked by Julius Randle, but it was also sparked by his Robin and R.J. Barrett. And after a disappointing rookie season where he was left off of the all-rookie team, Starts the season off slow, missing 21 straight three-pointers. He's definitely on the uptick, especially since January 1st. The efficiency numbers are up. Field goal percentage, three-point field goal percentage, and free throws as well. Um, talk to me about RJ's first half so far, man. Yeah, definitely something has clicked in. He's made such progress since the beginning of the season. RJ's above 10 now in PIE, which is measures impact. Um, he's really on the climb, so much so that, uh, you know, the sky can be the limit right now, but definitely a, a 1A right now to Julius Randle, and it's really fun to watch this season so far. Let's go to the film, Tommy, and take a look at where he made his biggest improvement so far this year. Yeah, and, you know, we talked about stuff clicking in, right? And I saw it really on that West Coast trip going back probably two months ago now or so in Golden State where he had his then career high, which was 28. But it's stuff like this, and T Coach Thibodeau talks about it all the time, which is reads. Here with Andrew Wiggins guarding him, Wiggins is a pretty, you know, decent man-to-man -man defender, but we'll see this from a few angles here. As the ball gets swung to him, the defense really, I think, recognizes an opportunity for Mitchell Robinson to set a screen. And without hesitation, this comes with confidence, this comes with experience. RJ really dips to that left strong hand. And what's most impressive for me, not only is the speed at which he makes that decision and finds that space, but also recognizing that James Wiseman, who could put that in the 10th row, um, he's able to actually get off it over uh, Wiseman and, and makes a big time shot. That's just for me confidence and it just for some reason something on the West out there in the West Coast just clicked in for him. A lot of it was stuff off the ball, but also a lot of the stuff was it with the ball. And you know, we see this play ha a lot now. Uh, obviously, Mitch Robinson's been out for uh, quite a bit here. Uh, see this with Noel, New Orleans Noel, but it's that really quick pick and roll that the corner defender is not able to get to the uh, the, the roller and Robinson fast enough. Uh, and it's been a, a dunk, a easy dunk. And as you saw the numbers there, uh, Robinson shooting well over 70% uh, on passes from Barrett and you know stuff like that. That is why, what's really interesting to me, uh, we'll get a look to that a little bit further uh, in the highlights. Here, Noel is the screener. Washington uses it big to, in drop coverage here. And what I like here is Barrett sells the, the pull up from the top of the key, pulling the defender, leaving Bullock wide open uh, on the wing. This to me is, again, this is just the evolution of Barrett. Mm -hmm. You know, the sell, he's not a great pull up mid range guy, but right. he's he's able to sell the defender, uh, Hechimura here, uh, that, you know what, this could be a wide open look for me and this could be an easy two. And he trades it for a better look and a three to two right. teammate. Pocket. This is where you start to build confidence with the team. This is where you, you know, you start to uh, step up as a leader and step up as somebody, as a guy that you know can make plays. Yeah, and as you see, he hits Bullock right in the pocket, right in stride. And as RJ's mid-range Im improves, you know, more teams are going to have to respect that. So as, as Rui comes in here and tries to cut him off at the nail, uh, you know, you're going to see more teams doing that just because you're going to have to respect that mid-range jumper. So it's very important that he's able to knock that down. Now, in this Miami series, I thought the Heat did a very good job of defending uh, RJ here against a pick and roll. What do we see them do here? What was Bolster's adjustments? Yeah, so they're not just going to let RJ do whatever he wants in the middle, and they're just, you know, going to make sure that they're putting as much pressure on him. I thought Olenek was a key piece in these in, in this game specifically as just sort of that bully aggressor who's going to come out and blitz and sort of move RJ off the ball and, and disrupt sort of that pick and roll. And then, okay, what are you going to do from there? Is it, uh, you know, RJ trying to get something off the catch? Is it something where he's got to find more space? Is it somebody that you don't want to get a touch late in the shot clock? Miami's great at disrupting pick and roll, disrupting what you want to do and getting you into your secondary and third and fourth options 
Um, here, Randall gets a touch, but he can't really do much with it. And that leaves RJ with sort of uh, off balance, not a terrible look, um, but certainly not the best look that you want in that situation. And this is what they do. They just blitz you if you try to get into uh, the nail, get into the paint. Um, they, they really do a good job of, uh, of, of setting that that roadblock so that it, it can't happen. Got great defenders like Nunn, great defenders like Butler, um, just a really good overall team. And uh, that's that's why they won that game in Miami, where everybody was all pumped up about it. Miami's like, all right, well, listen, we're gonna take these options away. And then, you know, we've got, you guys have to figure out what to do after that late in the clock and the Knicks weren't able to do it. What, what, you know, with a guy like RJ, who he may not have the speed, he may not have, you know, the handles kind of split the double teams and, and so on and so forth. Um, when, when a team like Miami, Miami, you know, is, is blitzing that pick and roll at the top of the key. You're going to see more teams doing that, especially if this team makes the playoffs. What type of adjustments do you think the Knicks need to make here to get RJ some uh, some, some better looks? <laughs> yeah, you can tell the teams that watch these type of games, the coaches and, and the coaching staffs, Orlando certainly won. Um, it's a great question, and it, uh, to me, it's just one about patience. And I think a lot of the stuff that we haven't seen really from RJ yet is what do we do mid to late clock when maybe you do get a switch, maybe trying to take advantage of a smaller defender in the post, trying to do draw a double team, running the offense through him that way, as opposed to just sort of, uh, you know, off a wing, off a dribble, right, right. Uh, handoff, or, at, you know, with the top pick and roll. But he's able to do all those things now, which really puts the defense at a disadvantage because, you know, they try to take everything away and it's, that, that's not always possible. Um, but I think he's just gonna have to really maintain patience. This is where the onus is on with Alfred Payton. This is where the upgrade there at that position is, is super important. I know people think I'm the, the biggest Elton Payton supporter on the planet. Um, you know, I think he's a very professional player. I don't think he's as terrible as people think, um, but they definitely need to upgrade that position for that specific reason. When they take it away from RJ, uh, as Miami does again here, mm -hmm. What's the what's the move? It has to be a quick decision yeah. to get the ball on a ball handlers and, and attack a gap. And, you know, that leads to layups and easy baskets for other players that um, the defense will then have to focus on. That's not just RJ. Yeah, de definitely adjustment that he's going to have to make. And like I said, I thought Spolstra did a masterful job in those two games that they played against Miami and really getting the ball out of RJ's hands quickly, uh, making the other guys beat you. And that really hurt the Knicks. Re really hurt RJ, got him off to slow starts, and, and, and it stymied the Knicks offense overall. And what I love about RJ is that when teams do that, they're physical. But he doesn't back down from physicality. And at the guard position, someone who gets a lot of touches like that, Mandel as well, who's, you know, obviously more guard forward. Um, Jimmy Butler's like that. You know, you got a lot, LeBron, obviously. You get guys who are just really, really strong with the ball. Um, they can sort of overcome it over the course of the game, I believe. They're not going to get um, bounced around and, um, you know, totally uh, taken out of the game for the entire game. RJ has the ability, even in bad games now, he's getting 15, 17, you know, where he's, um, you know, being disrupted with those type of things. So let's take a look at Absolutely. what he did here against the Celtics earlier this season. Remember Austin Rivers? Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so this, what I love about this sort of stuff is this is um, early on in the season when he wasn't making his threes and he just sort of started to get on a roll. Remember him getting very hot early uh, in that first game against the Pacers. And then you mentioned the slump for uh, a good a good stretch. Then you've got to build confidence from the vets. And Rivers was not someone who loved passing to him early in the year. Yeah. Um, he almost didn't want to pass to him on, on that play right there, but uh, RJ stayed patient, stayed in his spot. Here's another really good one for me. It's rejecting the screen, finding Peyton in the corner. Again, Peyton's not a great shooter, but it was the right play at that time because Kemba was, was helping and, and that would have been an issue. Um, but RJ does a great job of finding space in the opposite corner. Randall with a really good pass. They have really done an amazing job playing off each other yeah. together. But that comes from confidence. Right. If if Randall doesn't think RJ can make this open shot, he's not passing it to him. Yeah. So what you've seen here over the last few months is uh, the confidence between the two and RJ's confidence rising that when the ball comes to him, he knows he's going to make it. And that's a, yeah. it's a big deal for a young player. And, and one of the things you like is um, when he's making those baseline passes now, instead of Peyton, sometimes it's Julius Randall. And, and vice versa, you know, they're finding each other for those corner threes. So that's really building the chemistry. And as you see right here, RJ creating space 
on a starting five that you know really uh is looking for spacing at at you know the optimal um really just doing a good job of moving without the ball and and uh setting himself up for a nice three-pointer and that's where people have to be careful about assist numbers and you know rj is a guy who oh they only assist on you know 30 percent of his makes or whatever he's a driver and randall's a driver as well and Peyton's not a high assist guy because of that, you know? The three of them like to get the ball into the paint. They like to make things happen. They do draw a lot of fouls. So the assist numbers are gonna be down for those reasons. Now, granted, they do need someone who's gonna be able to get out and transition and help, um, you know, with those assist numbers. But again, it's for me, it's just about those two or those three playing off of each other um, when it's not just in the post, you know? You wanna see them drive and kick. And then, you know, if, if Barrett, again, if he becomes a guy who's going to be a very consistent spot shooter. Um, it, it, the sky's the limit, really, with what they can do because he's on his rookie contract. They can sign him to whatever they want, and then they can bring the other guys in the, in the gym, in the program, um, who can complement. And any player, any star player would want to play with a player like R.J. Barrett. There's no question about that. They'll be talking about that on ESPN at some point. Yeah, that's a fact. <laughs> that's a fact. Ever hear of ESPN? I don't know. Have, yeah. you, have you heard of ESPN? I, I just I started hearing about it lately, man. I just started hearing about the worldwide <laughs> leader in sports, you know? So, uh, so something that <laughs> maybe Calvin that, can talk way. about, man. Definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, what, what do we see here? We, we see RJ going up against Halliburton on the one-on-one. Yeah, and, you know, using the right hand. And, you know, again, what we sort of getting back to that, um, and he, as he looks at the right hand, which is which is what you love, mm -hmm. um, but just it all clicking in, right? It, the off ball stuff, and you know what what does that mean? That means that um, you have to continue to be a threat. You have to continue to move. Teams were playing zone and they were trapping. And I love this. You know, this right to me is, yeah, this is this is a jab step yeah, in your yeah. face, isolation, pushed up against the clock. This is a this is a prime time. Rest in peace, Kobe Bryant. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, Jordan, all the all the great closers, who you know they see the clock, they know the situation. Let me get into my my shot, the jab step, and uh, I saw that and I was like, okay, I love it. Okay, it's really really clicking in now. Uh, and then you just see the footwork, you know, and staying with the play, the passing getting a little bit better. Peyton's not a good finisher in that situation, but now you've got the defense on their heels, and RJ's ready, you know, like Randall just reversing the ball and let's make a play. Now you got an opportunity to attack the feet. You know, he's in a triple threat mm -hmm. position. Perfect triple threat stance. The defender's at his mercy. Mm -hmm. Yep, just look at his feet. He knows how to attack his feet. He's going to the cup and he's finishing with his right hand. And that's that's a very difficult finish and a, and a very um, savvy play from a, a young player. We, it seems to be the common theme here with him is, I can't believe this kid is 20 with the, the package of yeah. tools that he has. This is another great one early in the season when they absolutely blew the doors off the Celtics. This I is Kemba's first right game here. back. Mm -hmm. Look at the read. Look at the read. He notices defender's eyes off of him. He's not, it's not ball you, man. This is really basic stuff. He sees he's not being defended. He quick cut back door and a beautiful pass from quickly. They've got a nice synergy happening as well. Um, stuff like this is just really fun to watch. It's a it's a wonderful package for a really young player, and um, you know Nick fans should definitely be excited. And, and listen, the league is taking notice. People are yeah. talking about it, so you know that's how you know. It takes a long time for people to be like, all right, we'll talk about the Knicks now. Um, R.J. Barrett is a big reason why, as as is Randall, obviously. Big reason, big reason indeed, man. And you know, as we look into this second half, you see Julius is all star, and they're looking at the playoffs now. They're dropping a little bit. It's a tough schedule, dropping a little bit. But, you know, Julius, you know, is going to be a constant. He's he's the engine, but RJ's the most important in terms of who's going to be that Robin. We need to have him play consistently at a high level, and, and he's starting to do that. And as you said, at 20 years old, the, the mental toughness, limiting his mistakes, we see how he's moving without the ball. Uh, the three-point shooting numbers have been going up there. The, the free throw numbers have have been on an uptick. He's at seventy-five percent now, and it, it's just uh, it's been a pleasure to see, man. It, it's been an absolute pleasure to see. Like we said, he went up, went toe to toe with Simmons last night against Philadelphia. I just think uh, the mid-range is really going to be key. You know, getting a go-to mid-range move that he can knock down consistently, get him into a rhythm. And then, you know, the three-pointers and things like that will fall. Because we know Bully Ball, it, it, it'll be there. Uh, but we don't want him to, to rely on that excessively because we know the defenses will adjust accordingly. 
you're not going to get situations where you're going to have to, you know, be able to post up a guy like Seth Curry. Um, you know, you're going to have Ben Simmons there. So it's not going to be a lot of that bully ball, but you're right. There's got to be that. How does he get into the, the mid range area square up and, and be able to knock down those shots. And that's really the only part that's missing, you know, and then for me, the beauty is how they're playing now is the ability to upgrade. You upgrade at Bullock and, and Burks, you know, you get a, a yeah. more reliable shooter who can also defend. And then if you can upgrade at that point guard spot, we talked a lot about Lonzo Ball, and that name's being floated around. To me, an Alfred Pay- a better Alfred Payton by a wide margin, only 23. Um, the shooting for me, I'm a big believer in buy-in in the three. Um, you know, the off-court stuff, the noise, all that stuff seems to be silent. I don't know if that would change in New York. Maybe reading a lot about LeVar uh, in the New York Post. Um, you know, to me, it just makes a lot of sense because he pairs with an RJ. He pairs yeah. with a Randall. Um, they can continue to do what they're doing. And um, Lonzo can feed off of that and play off of that. And then you just got to find the guys who are consistent, more consistent shooters. Burks has been good. But I pulled the stat out. I, we were watching a game last night with some friends, and I said – you know, he seems to miss a lot of open shots. And Mm -hmm. sure enough, when you look at the numbers, when the closest defender is from four to eight feet or some, or something of that nature, three to six feet, he's, you know, something like 38 to 39%. Those are wide open shots Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's not making them enough. He's getting a lot of them. Um, I always say that the greatest recruiting tool is opportunity. Mm -hmm. So if you have a better shooter that comes in, that's getting those five, six wide open looks a game, then you're talking about someone who could be averaging 18 to 20 points a game, as opposed to Burks who's averaging, you know, in the, in the low teens or whatever it is, high, you know, uh, high single digits. So yeah. they're in a good spot because they have a player like RJ because of what Randall's doing to upgrade and, um, and to improve and, and see if they can take it to the next step. Yeah. And as you said, if we upgrade at the three, we upgrade at the one, his assist numbers are automatically going to go up because the Gotham lob is there. We were seeing that with him and Mitch and, and with him finishing a little bit better at the rim this year, you're going to have to respect the drive. You're going to have to respect the strength as well. And then respect the vertical spacing that Mitch gives you. And then obviously if you have guys that can give him a nice outlet, whether it's a, an improvement at the three an improvement at the one Lonzo's three point shooting is also improving. I love the way that they run that offense through RJ as well. And now that gives you, three guys that you can you know run different sets with whether it's Julius RJ and a more potent point guard so uh this guy can be the limit man but so far you very much encouraged with year two of RJ Barrett and uh looking forward to seeing how he finishes the season man the theme being like it's clicked in you know and you just there's just a feeling that you know now we can see it and I had it earlier where you know it's just it's this confidence that you see it's hard to it's not really tangible it's hard to really you know, put your finger on what it is, but it's happened with he RJ. Has, and has, once it's, once it happens, like there's no turning back, you know, then yeah. it just becomes what's, you know, what's the next step, what's the next phase. And he's such an astute kid, you know, he does his homework. Um, he just loves improving everything. So it's just great to watch him layer things on top of each other. And, um, you know, this, like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be really fun to see what happens next. Big time. Big time, man. Well, Tommy, outstanding job on this one again. And uh, it's been a long time, man. We got to catch up on another one soon, man. But absolutely appreciate the breakdown. Great job as usual. And, and we'll catch up on the next one, man. And I'd be remiss if I didn't say great job uh, with uh, Tommy, uh, Max Kellerman, Morrison. Uh, <laughs> you look like Mike Tyson after that first uh, Trevor Burbick oh, fight, yeah. man. No scratches. Oh, yeah. no no bruises, nothing. Went, went in there with the haymakers. Get out the man. broom. Went in there with the haymakers. None <laughs> of this Dolan talk. We're talking hoops.